Well, I'm uh, R Richard Anthony. Um, uh, Lynn and I started farming ourselves uh, be 25 years ago. Um, we started farming with uh, 110 acres and um, we've built it up over the years. We're now farming uh, just over 3,000 acres. We took on seedlings eight years ago. Uh, mo most of our ground is in um, arable rotation, uh, quite different to most arable rotations. Um, we do a lot of companion cropping uh, and a lot of cover cropping. Regenerative farming and uh, is, is what we people call it now, but um, I think it's regenerative farming is what we've been doing for the, la for the last 25 years really. The cover cropping and companion cropping isn't you know, now we, we really, really start to see the big difference. Our soils are a lot more healthy. We, our insect populations have uh, increased incredibly. And um, it's really exciting, a lot of this, this uh, the, the benefits we're seeing now from it. The aim is to get as much yield as possible out of the rape and we're doing that by um, sowing a lot lower seed rates now than what we used to. We're doing uh, between 30 and 35 seeds per square metre. What we're trying to, trying to do by reducing the seed rate, we're trying to end up with this big, uh, almost like a, each plant is like a tree in itself. So it's got branches, uh, it just keeps on branching out, branching out. So we're ending up with, a, with this canopy so that we'd have having pods for uh, almost like a metre of pods as where years ago we would have had um, very thin stems you know the, the plants would have been no, no thicker in your small yeah. finger and the, the, the canopy of pods would have been only very small as where now we're getting a, a lot more pods on, on, on the plants but, um, So as you can obviously you're planting less and your yield has Gone rocketed uh, yeah, gone up. Increased. Yes, yeah. yes. You can see by the plant that Dan has brought you. If you look at that, it's like a tree in itself. So talk about uh, taking CO2 in. The, it, it, it's incredible. We, it's all about our soil management. Um, our organic levels are, yeah. are, 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 are going up every year. Really, it's, it's how we improve on what we're doing now. Um, we're uh, looking at um, when we put the facilia in now, we're going to try some vetches with the facilia again. So we, we're always trying some, something new with, yeah. with, with the crop. I always try and find another line. The, 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 the overriding reason for us putting the companion crop in, in is to get the rape established. So they mask the, the companion crops are masking the rape to, so the flea beetle is finding it difficult to find the rape, so we're able to get the rape to establish. But then the spring beans and the vetches are fixing nitrogen, uh, and the buckwheat mines phosphate and releases the phosphate. But when the, the buckwheat then dies off when we have frosts in the winter. It's releasing the phosphate in a form that the rape can take it up in. Yeah. And if you just, uh, all, all the trial work is showing that you get an increase in yield on, on the rape from that. The, we'll plant a crop of phacelia after the oilseed rape, which will be in for six to eight weeks. That's creating a, the, the mycorrhizin in the phacelia is fantastic. And when you put a spade in the ground, the, the root is, is unbelievable. The, the, the soil is white with, with so many roots. The insects and worm populations uh, are fantastic in it. But then we'll direct drill the, the wheat in, into that, into the phacelia. And then what we find is in the, in the following spring, that those wheats won't need any early nitrogen. They, they're a lot greener, so it's held the uh, nit nitrogen in the soil over the winter, yeah. so it, it, it's all reducing our, our inputs then. It's uh, fantastic. 
look at this crop here and then you move you know i know we've got a, got the track here yeah. but if you look at the the hedges now with us the hedge management you know th this hedge is five six meters wide uh, wide Fairly high. About three, four, three, four meters high. Three, four meters three tall. Places, yeah. So, you know, th that in itself is a wildlife corridor. Yeah. You know, and then we've everywhere. Then we've got a grass strip a along the side with a, with a uh, wildflower mix in it. So it's all giving us that biodiversity. Then, which we're trying to get that uh, out of insect and everything out into into the crop just the fact that it's not cropped right up to the base of the hedge because you've got that allows the hedge to become nice and thick at the base and nice you know you've got a nice thick habitat at the base lots of vegetation it's, it's fantastic for wildlife yes but to, to get these hedges like this the, the, the way we've we've managed them we started off uh eight years ago when we took the farm on they they were quite small uh, and uh, hedges and quite open yeah. and we've cut them four to six inches wider and taller each year yeah. and what you do then you you get every time you, you you cut it you get it to branch out then you cut it another four to six inches it up. and it's, it's bushing out there. all the time yeah. so so that's how we got such thick hedges yeah. The add-on benefits that quite often are very very difficult to measure yeah. they, they've got a huge benefit in the long term it, it, it's all given us uh, in, increases in our organic levels it's all given us an increase in the biodiversity and uh, you know it, 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 it's 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 all about the the bigger picture at the end of the day it's uh, you know uh, you, you can't lose sight of what we've got to do. We've got to make money. If we don't make money, we can't do it anyway. Yeah. We, we've put um, uh, whatever we had, the wild bird mixes, um, we've basically put, uh, put one of these in, in, in the same areas. So what we tend to find is um, when we get into January, we, we tend to put them put them out. Then, when the the other the, the mixes are starting to uh, run short of food, yeah. to, to just try and help the songbirds keep the songbirds on the farm. And um, well, it seems to work because we got huge numbers of songbirds through January and February. And um, it's lovely to see see them that time of year because you see them going along the hedgerows and, uh, and flock in, in well, flocks yeah. like it's yeah, um, yeah it's. it's it, it, I think it's definitely helped. Like, because so. even with the best, um, the wild bird seed mixes in your crops, they'll become seed depleted, and that hungry gap is critical. Then, so, and yes. it's great to see that there's food still in there now. What are we mid May? So you're feeding right up until the end of May here, and it just helps keep those birds in really good condition. We're growing lupins to try and replace some of the dependency on soya in the in the livestock rations. Um, so homegrown protein is is the key, and um, we could have looked at beans or peas or anything like that, but we decided to go with lupins. Okay. Um, it's a crop I first grew when I was managing the farm in Kenya, and um, it's quite chuffed to see it in the growing it back in the UK, to be honest. So all to do with being sort of carbon neutral as a as an industry not not just arable farmers but also livestock farmers yeah. um, you know if, if we can sort of replace some of that soil dependency it's um, it's going to be cheaper for them and and more sustainable going forwards conservation can't be in isolation we're quite intensive but your conservation all needs to to fit in with it yeah. and getting that to fit in is, is is very important getting it all linked up so all of these strips they actually link up yeah. so this strip you know you've got the valley there 
with the gorse, so this links to the to the to the valley. So this links then to that woodland. Then if you go the when we go the other side of the wood, the, there's corridors then that link to the wood over the other side. Yeah. So we're creating these wildlife corridors which everywhere, which which it, nothing's in isolation. Yeah. It's it's difficult to. You know, you, you, you need to think about that. You need to think how that will work. Yeah. It's trying to get it all managed. It, it, it's all part of the bigger yeah, exactly. picture. It's all about getting this, uh, you know, we enjoy it. Yeah. We, you know, we, we all love what we do. Yeah. And I enjoy, I, I enjoy a bit of shooting. But I enjoy this every bit as much, if yeah, not more. Yeah, yeah. But this wouldn't happen if we didn't have the shoot. Yeah, or be a wouldn't kind of... have, we wouldn't have had it? We wouldn't have done what we have. We, we, what we're trying to do, we're trying to develop something that, that works here, and then roll it out on the rest of the farm. Yeah. So I see this almost as our pet pr project then, really, because if we got, we got to fund it, and some of what we've done hasn't worked. Yeah. You can't go and do it on. 3,000 acres and then uh, you know it costs you a fortune we, yeah, exactly. we, we, we're trying to learn what works in one place and then roll it out onto the onto the next block <laughs>